Hey everyone, welcome to episode 35 of Heroic Nonsense. I've been waiting a long time for this one and I'm totally excited to bring this to you because this week's episode is part one of my spotlight on Studio Series 86 Commander Class Optimus Prime, the heroic and iconic leader of the Autobots that inspired a generation of kids and fueled our imagination for decades to come. He was and is the very best of the Autobots, their strongest, wisest leader who sacrificed his life in the 86 movie defending Earth and Cybertron from the evil clutches of the Decepticons and with it bringing tears to our very young eyes. I still remember the exact moment I got my original 1984 Optimus Prime figure that I still have to this day. He was the pinnacle of the Transformers line and he is finally back in all his glory as this incredible updated figure based off of the movie. And this is just part one. Part 2 will have even more to bring, so make sure you stick around until the end to see what's in store. And with that, let's transform and roll out with Studio Series 86 Optimus Prime. And here he is, this absolutely amazing figure of Optimus Prime that looks like he walks straight out of the 86 movie. I honestly couldn't be happier with how this figure turned out because this figure truly has it all. The smooth, clean finish, the vibrant colors, the majesty of the character the pretty much flawless execution. This is essentially a masterpiece style figure that takes that aesthetic one step further by perfectly capturing Optimus Prime's overall look and feel from the original cartoons and movie. This is the figure you want and need if you love Transformers and Optimus Prime. And with all that, let's dive right in and take a closer look at everything this toy has to offer, starting with his overall look, which is such a loving homage to the character from the movie. I swear, when I look at this, I feel like I've jumped right into the movie itself. His colors are perfect, down to his bright red upper body, and his essentially white upper legs and waist, which I have to say took me aback for a moment when I opened him, as I was not used to seeing the toy painted this way. And throwing in his blaster, you get the Optimus of your dreams, and that's not even considering the perfection that is his alt mode, which we'll get into shortly. I love that they were able to get his upper body so close to the cartoon version. After all, he is a semi-truck, which means he's essentially a square on wheels. To be able to replicate this tapered look so effectively is such a bonus. As for his face, it is exactly what you'd want to see from this figure. It's the Optimus we all know and love. Look, at this point, Hasbro and Takara are experts at replicating Optimus's face on the various versions they make. I just feel that this one though really takes the cake, accurately capturing every single detail. If you close your eyes and think of what Optimus should look like, this is it. And finally, his exhaust stacks are proper height. I hated the stunted ones, and this is way closer to the actual ones from the cartoon and real semis. This Autobot symbol also looks amazing. This front-facing side view really highlights how good he looks from these front perspectives. You want a figure that looks as good as possible from these vantage points, especially if you're going to display this figure, which is a big part of what it's made for. It's funny, after having seen so many different versions of Optimus through the years, I never realized that his legs actually look like this in the movie, with a slightly trapezoid shape and with gas tanks that weren't actually rounded. I also like the way they didn't overdo the details on the legs, striking a balance between the smooth bot form with the utilitarian look of the truck. A close up here so you can see the color a bit better of his upper legs as well as how the waist covers move to provide range of motion for the legs. I will note here though that the two waist armor pieces don't move independently from each other, at least on my version, and which therefore can look a bit strange in certain positions. As a commander class figure, he has articulated fingers which is great and provides for a wide range of finger and fist movements. Some other examples taken directly from the movie, including the pattern, shape, and color of his yellow adornments here, as well as the arrow symbols etched onto his lower arms. So I did say that the front view looked incredible and is what you really want from a figure for display and all those other good things. The back unfortunately is not as clean and is where the figure loses some points, but not many. I would have loved to have seen this cleaned up a bit more closer to a Masterpiece Optimus. However, I do recognize that this isn't a Masterpiece in the end, and for the price point and type of figure, it isn't a deal breaker at all for me. Again, the likelihood that anyone would ever really see this in a display is minimal as it is actually well hidden from the front. And to be honest, it doesn't stick out that much anyway. A simple panel would have cleaned this right up, and it's probably the only thing it would have needed. The head doesn't have a huge range of motion, but does look great from every angle, case in point. The articulation and balance is excellent, so you can have him pose in many different ways, including my favorite, having a transformer in the walking position. This part one isn't focusing on comparisons with the rest of the line and other bots, that will be in part two, but I figured I'd throw in Inferno here because I always thought these two look cool together. Another example of his good range of motion, though you can see here how those small armor pieces at his waist both move up and don't move independently. As with any good Optimus, you must have a Matrix. Similar to Studio Series Ultra Magnus, they went all in to replicate Optimus's Matrix chest cavity and how it opens up. I grabbed this Matrix effect though from Studio Series Hot Rod. All the matrices to date are the same size and interchangeable. 
I never really played around with the trailer in this way too much, especially as a kid, but it does look pretty impressive here and can serve as a nice backdrop if you plan on keeping him in bot mode. So overall, an incredible figure that does the movie version justice and is, in my opinion, a must-have for anyone's collection. I absolutely love this bot mode. Now onto the part that I think excites me the most because who doesn't love a semi-truck that actually looks like a realistic semi-truck? I've always been slightly disappointed with the scale of the various Optimus Prime alt modes, including the Last Siege version, even though I thought it was a great toy and figure, and I do recognize some exceptions need to be made in order to bring a Transformer to life in both modes. However, I'm very happy with how this version of Optimus in his alt mode turned out. He's big and chunky, just like a semi should be, and really doesn't have much kibble sticking out anywhere. But the best part has to be the trailer. Finally, after all these years, a full, large, properly scaled trailer that looks exactly like the original. I was overjoyed when I heard they were making a proper trailer for Optimus and not skimping out. Now I can finally say we have a proper, updated G1 Optimus. Putting it all together and wow, what an incredible image. The trailer dominates the back of the truck like it should and is very realistic subject to a few small additions on the undercarriage which I'm totally happy about because that is exactly what the original G1 version had. Zooming in a bit you can see how they connect and the nice space in between the cab and trailer in order to allow for proper turning. The Autobot symbol is front and center on both the cab and trailer and the exhaust pipes look amazing. An even closer look reveals some more details, especially with the rivets and the gates on the steps. And these aren't dinky, non-useful steps either. These actually look like they would work and be the right scale for someone to be able to get into the truck. Nice silver gas tanks as well. Windows on both the front and sides are clear plastic, painted blue, so that adds to the realism as well. I always hated when they skimped on providing full windows on the side of the cab. Simply showing here how the cab looks without the trailer. Again, no real kibble that stands out, so it's nice that you can keep it this way as well. Front looks great, nice big plastic windows, some realistic elements like rivets and windshield wipers, and it has that great silver iconic bumper and grill. I think it's really difficult to produce a proper authentic back of the cab that houses a trailer connector, especially where you need this back portion to form proper legs with no gaps in bot form. So I think they did a really good job here in making this portion mostly smooth and cohesive right up there with the Masterpiece versions. Another front shot so you can see how the trailer towers over the cab, which is fantastic. The trailer really is as big a part of the all mode as the cab is. And another bonus, you can actually fit a range of vehicles in the cab, not one, but two even, depending on size and whether or not roller is inside. Otherwise, one most definitely fits in even with roller at the front. You've also got a functioning ramp that looks great, not like the Siege version that became a shield. In this first shot, we have Trax, who fits right in, followed by Trailbreaker, who can fit in if placed forward-facing. However, a vehicle like Ironhide wouldn't fit in because of its shape. This is due to the connectors at the top of the trailer, which hang down a bit and therefore won't let a truck with no lower front hood fit in, even if it generally clears the overall height requirements. Once opened, plenty of room for multiple bots in their alt modes. Optimus can also fit in so that he can hang out in his repair bay if needed. And I'm so happy to see Roller back in his silver color. Would have liked to have seen the ejector like the original trailer had, but I can live without it here. Roller also fits in forward on this version so that his front bumper can attach to the repair bot section so he doesn't bounce around inside when closed. Some other features. While there is a regular stand for the trailer as well, you can open up these arms like so to give it the stability it needs when the bay walls are folded open. The repair bot can also fit onto Roller, which is not something the original did. Size-wise, Roller looks the way he should look next to Optimus and is a pretty good size to be honest. And if you have some Headmasters lying around or some of those Power of the Primes pretenders, they actually fit right into Roller who has room for four of them. I love when they add these extra bit of details in, especially when they incorporate older lines. And like every good Roller should, he can pull the trailer if Optimus is unable to. Lots of playability with his trailer which is great for kids. And look who else can pull the trailer, Huffer, just like he did in the G1 cartoon. We'll see more of these types of shots and builds in part 2, but thought I'd give a bit of a teaser since I totally remember trying to do this with my original G1ers. So I'm going to give you lots of tips that aren't in the instructions, so make sure you watch the whole way through. Alright, so what we're going to start with is opening up this panel on the lower arms, like so, and then you take the fist make sure it's closed properly and then push it back in click it all the way down otherwise the panel won't close properly and then just click that panel back into place you'll then rotate 
the arm 180 degrees and then lift up the lower arm like so 90 degrees we'll do the same for the other side so open up the panel again take the fist make sure it's closed push it back in and then click that in place well you can actually move the exhaust like so so it doesn't get in the way and then you flip it around lift it up and then what we'll do is we'll just lift up each arm like so and get it ready for the next part of the transformation and then just flip it around and lower this blue part which actually forms the connector for the trailer so here's going to be one of my first major tips you're going to rotate the waist slightly like this just so you can get access to this side panel and this other side panel and then you can turn it back and flip it 45 degrees the other way so you can do the same thing on the other side now you have access to these very small little tabs that need to be opened and it makes it really difficult if you don't do this little trick that isn't in the instructions now we're going to flip this tab up from the back I guess the backpack portion and then just open these two panels up that house the wheels 90 degrees and lower this whole front portion of the cab down now what I like to do here is turn the whole body around not just the middle waist and then turn the top part back also not in the instructions now as for the head we're going to lower these antennae down just just to make sure it doesn't get stuck on anything when we tuck it away so we're gonna flip it backwards now mine is extremely tight and so here's another tip for anyone who has a very tight version open this little tab up now at this point and then grab on to the cab with your index fingers at the bottom and your thumbs here and just press really hard and I promise it will go in don't be afraid it actually scared me a bit um, and then you can lift that part back up now what you'll do is lift this portion of the grill up and lower that back down now here you just have to wiggle these into place they don't really do anything they're pretty much just taken out of the sides there just to make it clear for the other parts and you just wiggle it in like that and they don't have to be perfect you will see it from the back of the truck but not that important now these tabs that we lifted up before you can push them back down like so and then here's another trick make sure this tab is straight so just make it perfectly straight because you will have to connect the arms with this tab right here into that portion we just straightened out this is pretty much like most Optimus Primes where you fold the arms back and then fold this lower arm right into place it's kind of the thing to do with Optimus Prime. You do the same over here, just click that tab into that little hole and then flip this in. There's also some tabs there that keep it all together. And now this just really clicks in very easily at this point. You take the grill, lower it down, it unfolds the other other part of the grill essentially and then just push it back into place and there you pretty much have the front of the cab now to do the side panels we open up this part and then lift this up 180 degrees click it into place and make sure your arms are tabbed in correctly you see right here there's another tab otherwise it won't it all together nicely do the same on this side open up this little tab lift this up 180 degrees and just click it into place 
And that's pretty much it for the front part. Now let's get to the back. So we're just going to open up this panel like so. And then you can just flip it back and it tabs into the side of the leg right here. And now they're out of the way. You can see the back wheels right there. And you just got to lift these, these little parts out because this is what's actually going to keep the legs together and they're hidden away so they don't stick out while in bot form. So you can see right here, we're going to push down the feet and then we're just going to click the legs into place. And now what you want to do is just rotate this front cab back 90 degrees, straighten up the legs, push this tab down. You got to wiggle the wheels a little bit just to give it room to fit in and tab back in. And we're almost there. What we'll do now is just make sure these are completely straight and then lower the back portions of the feet and that makes the back headlights. This part I think is really cool. You flip this open 180 degrees, it's going to tab into the cab right here. And we'll do the same here. So just rotate it back and click it in. And this part, what we'll do is it actually it's a very tight, so don't be afraid to push it out. You just Take it out, rotate the front panel 180 degrees, and you see this tab here, it's going to tab right into place. You might have to wiggle it out a bit just to pass that front tire. And then we'll do the same on this side, again very tight, just rotate it 180 degrees, turn that front tab portion 180 degrees, you can just put it out a bit until you're past the tire and then straighten out, click it in like so. Everything's nice and tight. And then all we have to do is flip out the tires like this. Do the same here. And there you have it. The cab portion of Optimus Prime transformed and ready to roll out. So part one of the spotlight is going to focus on how this figure compares to the same scaled Optimus figures. However, we will look at a ton more comparisons in part two, including with all the Studio Series figures as well as G1 and Masterpiece. For this part, however, I felt it was appropriate to start here since I think it gives the best idea of how Studio Series Optimus fares against the previous lines and specifically Siege Optimus, which was the gold standard for a long time. Right off the bat, you can see the size difference, which is a welcome change, especially since Studio Series 86 will scale way better with Studio Series 86 Magnus, Galvatron, the Dinobots, and the rest of that line. There are also a ton of notable differences, the largest being how clean and vibrant SS86 Optimus looks next to Siege. Now don't get me wrong, Siege Optimus was and still is a great figure and I loved it, but it was definitely time for an upgrade. Looking at the top portion, they generally look similar with SS86 Optimus having a bit more of an imposing feeling to him. He has larger windows and doesn't have any knobs or ports sticking out. That was great for Siege at the time for all the gimmicks, but I didn't care much for all of that from a purely aesthetic position. And look at those terrible short stacks with a huge port in them. The side view highlights one important feature that I didn't mention earlier. The wheels on the legs are completely hidden away on SS86 Optimus, just like in the movie version. You can see more of the unsightly ports on Siege as well, and some silver lining that couldn't be hidden on the arms. Again, you see the SS86 trapezoid shape, which is too inaccurate, versus the straight-legged version with wheels on Siege. The feet are also different, with SS86 being again more accurate to the movie. I'd say Siege might have a slightly upper hand on the back kibble, which is less obvious as compared to SS86. It also sticks out a lot less, as can be seen from this angle. However, from this angle head-on, I like that SS86 hides the tires away and tightens everything up a bit more. The legs are also much messier on Siege and don't reflect the cartoon version very well with the shape and color. 
Best view to see how terrible the stacks were on Siege. As for the heads, I think they're both pretty bang on with SS86 beating out Siege's head by a bit, especially around the antenna area. The Studio Series Optimus has the most tuned and G1 accurate version of his blaster. While Siege did an okay job with it, the original design just can't be beat. So two great figures with Studio Series being the logical evolution of the character after Siege being out for so many years. I'll always have a special place in my heart for Siege Optimus, but Studio Series is where it's at now. Now the trucks, and more specifically the trailers, are where the differences in my opinion are most evident. That Siege version is tiny next to Studio Series. Although I guess I got used to it for a bit, I had always hoped for the full scaled version. I hated that stumpy little trailer, and we never ever had it out for displays. It was and will stay in the dustbins of time. Back to the cab though, again both look good and I really did like the Siege version, but I always felt the scale was off for a semi and didn't enjoy how it looked next to the other Autobots in alt mode, especially next to the more recent bigger ones like Trailbreaker and Studio Series Ratchet and Ironhide. The trailer though, wow was it bad, barely making it over the top of the cab portion, and way too short lengthwise and heightwise, there's absolutely no comparison which one is better. The only thing it had going for it was that it tried to replicate the original G1 details, but otherwise it did nothing for me. Again, back to the cab, it's great that SS86 is bigger since it means that it will look way better with the other Autobots in all mode. I love scale and Siege just didn't hit the mark there. Another view and another example of how much smaller Siege was. You can also see how the top is much better on SS86 with no gaps showing to make one nice square roof. I do like that they painted the windshield wiper silver on Siege though, still a very cool truck and version of Optimus, and I can see some people still possibly preferring the cab of Siege. Not a bad job on the back part of the cab either, from this angle it looks as good in both versions. I feel you see the brakes in the cab a lot more for Siege though, a lot smoother on SS86 Optimus. And with the trailers, well you know my feelings on this by now. Both have small gaps in the center back from this angle, but Siege had a spot for the folded up laser to fit in and fill it up a bit, though it still stood out like a sore thumb. The taillights portion looks better on SS86, and you get hints of how much cleaner the back is at this angle. Not bad, but I like the block of blue on SS86 and how it all comes together as one unit. Length difference is evident here as well. And the trailers by themselves, no comparison. It almost looks like the Siege trailer can fit inside the SS86 one. More scale comparisons and why the Siege trailer barely went higher than the cab. And facing the other way, another thing I hated on the trailer, those wheels and how they were attached to the trailer. So damn ugly. No comparison. One looks like real doors on a trailer while the other looks like a mess. What was the point of making it look that way, even if it was meant to be a removable shield? Those back wheels look even worse from this angle on Siege. Again, what's the point? SS86 is the way it should have always been. As for the inside once opened, I don't have a strong opinion either way. Other than being smaller, they both generally accomplish the same thing, though nice to have the blue back on the repair unit. Also nice to have roller back. The repair unit on Siege really didn't look that great either. No color, not much detail, and too small. My preference for the repair unit is still G1, but I'll discuss that more in part 2. A bit more scale comparison and showing how roller connects to the repair unit. Obviously not much room on the Siege trailer, you can fit only one bot on Siege while you can fit at least two on SS86. Switching positions, it's evident how little room there is in Siege. Way more impressive for Studio Series Optimus, look how much higher up the trailer goes in this position. Let's throw in the other prime of the recent lines, Laser Optimus, i.e. G2 Optimus Prime. Other than those shoulders, he's a bit smaller than SS86 Prime, but can still hold his own. As for the alt mode, I think he actually looks a bit better scale wise with the new Optimus Prime figure and I feel can also hold his own here. He has those bigger windows and overall longer frame so I think he doesn't look half bad here. The tanker portion is a bit smaller scale wise as compared to SS86 Prime but I think it looks fine with his version of Prime even next to the movie version. Where he really shines is here, where he can actually connect to the new updated trailer. It actually looks quite good and could easily be mistaken for the trailer that would have come with Laser Prime if you didn't know better. Unfortunately the same can't be said for Siege Optimus. The connecting port is too close to the cab portion and the trailer is a bit too big resulting in a slight downward slant. For the sake of completion, let's take a quick look at Court Class Optimus. It's fun to place together for no real reason. I like placing the Court Class spots with the Titan Class figures, which actually makes for a nice display. Just to get an idea of scale, here they are next to each other in alt mode. And with Roller, again, given Roller is an extra add-on, they did a nice job with him scale-wise. 
Worlds collide as Optimus meets his younger, less matrixy self. Fun to see how they look next to each other. Looks like the red they use in both figures is pretty similar. As for alt modes, they actually look quite good together. Maybe in some alternate universe, these two versions of the same character meet and go on adventures together. I tend to keep these original Cybertronian versions of the Autobots separate from each other, but it still looks nice. As I said, we won't really look at scale here as compared to the other bots, that's for part 2, but I at least wanted to give you a quick glimpse of how the all modes stack up. As I said earlier, it's great that the Autobot Jeeps and Vans who are not semis actually look smaller now. It always bugs me when an alt mode that's supposed to be large is actually equal in size to or smaller than other alt modes. Beautiful job on the art for the box, replicating the iconic shot of Optimus transforming to take on the Decepticons after having just jumped from the shuttle. I really like this cartoon feel. The side shot is also amazing, such a stoic and powerful image. The back shows all the goodies that come with the toy and all the fun ways you can play and display. Also, nice 40 step transformation reference. The other side is a close up of the other side panel with the Studio Series branding. And you get a real image of the toy with the accessories that he comes with, reimagining the movie scene we just spoke about. We'll get into all the accessories in part 2 when we look at display ideas. And of course, as a standard for Studio Series, we have the background from the movie and that iconic scene as a backdrop, which looks amazing. I think it's the biggest one to date. Optimus fits perfectly onto this display, but looks even better when you add in some other bots. I know this shot isn't from the movie, but wanted to use some of the original Autobots that I am fond of here. And it looks amazing from a close-up shot perspective. No accessories yet, so I didn't showcase the scene of him blasting up and transforming. That will come but lots of room to place him on the display in different configurations. And it can even accommodate the full trailer if you place him just right, which is really cool. Again, getting a close-up shot with this background looks great and really feels like you're in the movie. Overall, best background in my opinion. So that brings us to the end of part one. I broke it up this way because this figure really does deserve an extra long special and doing it all in one spotlight wouldn't do it justice. For a bit of a preview, part two will have a ton more, including comparisons to my original G1 Prime, Masterpiece Prime, and all the other Studio Series figures and beyond. We'll also check out the accessories and how we can make and replicate some great displays. We'll see some more shots with some new backgrounds and go through all the display and build ideas, as well as some movie replicated shots, and there are a lot. So keep an eye out for that when it comes out, likely closer to the holidays. See you all next episode, and remember... It's all such heroic nonsense in the end. Bravo.